<laughs> Hello. And welcome to my third devlog. Let me show you what I did. First, I wanted a tactics window, like in Dragon Age. So I went ahead and thought about how I could do this. The first thing that came to mind was a container. As a background that I could move and all the contents move relative to it. A very simple implementation in which I would call start and end container. In the beginning I only had some minor problems, but it quickly grew out of proportion. I used to do that. What the fuck happened? I should not have a container. How come this finds a container? But that's not enough to stop me. I can go even further, man. Like making the container grow dynamically whenever I add a new UI element. Quickly smash that into the code. And I got myself a first container. Then I went ahead and put get owner on every single UI element. Like so and like so. And in case I found one, I would grow it. Grow container over there. The first attempts were, huh? let's say, huh? suboptimal. But after a bit of thinking, I smashed that. Boom. It came out okay and I had my first moving container. Well, almost. It kind of didn't clear itself up, but I didn't know why. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. You can also support me on Patreon. I've set up a new page. Supporting means getting access to the game code that I'm currently working on, which is Cake's Tower Defense. I kept going, and in order to do rules, I needed a dropdown. I would do a dropdown and then do a bunch of dropdown values, depending on how many array elements I have. Oh, and I also added some rule types over here. And of course, the actions down there. To give you some explanation on how this works, all the drop-down values have their owner set to the drop-down menu. And so if the drop-down menu changes position, all the drop-down values should change their position as well. And the drop-down itself would have the container as the owner. And after a bit of trying, I got myself a nice drop-down. And Chad liked it. Using my very first devlog video as a template, I started implementing the tactics window. Boop! Since I now had to manage two owners, it got a lot more difficult to position based on them. Even Chad told me at this point that my approach might not be as good as I thought it would be. And I totally didn't waste three days continuing. I kept tweaking code and it got only worse. I still don't know what happened. Huh? Sometimes it would work, but the positions were very off. And the drawing order was not handled properly as well. I had some text shining through. At this point, I needed a break and I also noticed that my font was kind of strange. It had these weird pimples. To give you a comparison, this is true type versus free type. For some reason, true type has these weird pimples while free type doesn't. But luckily, a hero in chat pointed, pointed me towards a different way of doing font. Signed distance field font rendering. Basically what you do, you take the glyphs and you generate decreasing alpha values the further you get away from the middle. What you do in this type of rendering is you define a width and what is called an edge transition. Everything that is included in the width of the character will have a value of 1 and starting from the width up until the edge transition, the alpha value blends from 1 to 0. You know, my first attempts were... <laughs> you can render large characters by defining a very tiny edge and still have them look very sharp. So after tweaking a bit, I found a good sweet spot for my font that I was using at the time. Sadly, I still had the owner problem and that got out of hand, man. Huh? I don't know what on earth I did here. So I scratched all of that and went for a very simple way of doing UI. Hard-coded positions and everything inside a container is just relative to the container position. That worked so well that I actually made a first art piece myself. Look at the scroll, man. And smash that into the game. Boom! <laughs> Damn, that looks good. Then I went ahead and added a new button to go with my awesome scroll. Import that thing in the game and boom! After adding some nice heading and numbers for the rules, my tactics window was finished. I also improved my font a little bit by adding drop shadows. First you draw the border and an offset and over the border you draw the glyph. I also added a simple skill icon and put that in the bottom bar which I created as well to look at the entity stats. And then I noticed something strange. Huh? The icons for my heroes shifted and were no longer matching up. Basically I had been adding more assets and the older assets were pushed down and I had been saving my heroes to files, indexing into enums. So I started thinking about how I could solve this issue and thought about many different solutions like adding JSON files. And I thought in order to solve the problem I had to re change how the asset system works. Actually it turns out I didn't have to do that and I guess now I have a new asset system. But yeah anyways, the asset system that I created worked like this. I had an asset pack file that contained what is called a header 
which is just this structure over here. So basically an area of assets. And then after that, I would have assets. So I would load textures, put them into the asset pack file and store the byte offset and the size in bytes for that particular asset. And this data would be raw data that could be fed into the GPU without having to do any transformation. And by the way, that took me about a week and I couldn't start my program at all. This is the first time running the program. It took a while, but internally I was like, yes! Boom! Sorry, guys. So I went ahead and created some terrible art, a tree, a stump, some water with stumps and trees, made that look as good as I can and put it into the game. Looks terrible, but damn, that was cool. Next, I wanted to add animations. And so I quickly thought about how I would do this. If I have an asset sprite sheet and it has like five animation pictures, I would need to divide the width and the height by the sub rectangle width and height, depending on the animation index. After figuring out the correct row and column, I could figure out the correct UV coordinates for the texture and send them to the fragment shader. Boom. And then it was time to bust out the pixel art, going into another level, create my first art piece. Yeah. That wasn't me. <laughs> uh, actually, I started like this. Huh? That is supposed to be a cakes. Oh boy, I was terrible. I tried so hard, but damn, it looked trash. I still don't like the smile. <laughs> Hello. But I didn't give up. I, I knew I had to go to school, so learn pixel art and try again. Getting better. Adapt. Evolve. Overcome. Still looks trash, but better. And start again. Focus. You can do this. There's nothing stopping you, man. You can do whatever you want. Just don't give up. Patience. And so I learned and got better. And after a small while, boom, the first cakes to be born. And that looked so good, it motivated me. I thought I could do some animation and show chat how I wanted the animation to be. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. And put this into the game. My first animated sprite in my own game that was so cool i also added an idle animation and made them spawn so after a bit of you know looking at google and trying out i tried very hard and boom had my first tree but i also wanted to have a nice touch to the tree i just didn't want to have green trees because only green trees is boring isn't it i wanted to have something more delicious and flexible what i would do is i would repaint the shades in different alpha values like here it looks like i'm erasing but i'm actually painting alpha and so the final result looked transparent but this is what i wanted because i could then use this tree load it into the game and use a different shader to do this have a blue tree or maybe red what about this color don't know what that is but looks cool i also tried making a map in s sprite but it didn't really work i also played around using different colors then i also started making a level editor so i could plant trees and change their color look at those trees man those are smarties kind of reminds me of yoshi's island damn that was a good game oh yeah and then i started making my own font atlas cause why not right and damn there was a lot of work oh man it took me like three days and have you ever tried making a star in a 16 by 16 font atlas i don't know about you no matter what i tried it always looked like a freaking bug or a squashed frog so i had to cheat on that one and took one off the internet and boom i noticed that the little characters were not the same height so i had to redo the those, which was great so yeah i went ahead fixing those and finally i was done by the way that y looks awesome the next thing that i needed was a road as a background for my level so i started doing that placing a bunch of pixels like boom 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 and placing some grass like boom 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 making it look cool and then placing a bunch of trees like blah 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 and i also added a stump because why not and some rocks and boom my first designed level with some cakes 